Well, the Porton mix of global pullback as well as bargain buying helps the Indian markets extend their winning streak to three sessions now. The Nifty up 58, finally closing at 2,777, while the Sensex shot shop at 8,943. That put on about 186 points, Harsha. That's right. On what's not tonight, we ask, is this rally sustainable? Joining us to discuss this, Abhay Ayama, Director of HTFC Securities uh, in our studios in Mumbai. Abhay, many thanks for joining us. Uh, what's your assessment of how we are positioned at this point in time? Do you reckon that there is enough steam for uh, a further upward move? See, I don't know about uh, the steam part of it because that is very short term and very technically oriented. But if I was to look at markets, there are two aspects to a market, which is uh, the value uh, which one can discuss and have an intelligent debate about. The other uh, questionable part, and that is what makes the markets interesting, is that uh, equities as an asset class attracts risk capital. Now, risk capital by definition, because of the asset that it is going into, could be far in excess and could distort the valuations on the upside. That is what you saw when the market was in the 22,000 range and people were expecting 30,000. Or the risk capital could disappear as you are seeing right now and they could be crying valuations but still the capital will not. So because it is associated to the risk capital and not only to valuations, it is very difficult to make those calls because valuations as I said one can have an intelligent discussion and one can come out to earnings but the risk capital is something which is to do with the psychology. So in those terms, what you're lacking today, if I was to define, if I was to take these two parameters is, I think the valuations are attractive or historically where they have been, they are good. And, but the, when the risk capital will return, to what extent it will return is a very debatable thing because a lot of psychology goes into it. All right, Abhi, let's not talk about psychology, but let's talk about valuations because that is what you just mentioned. Do you reckon some pockets like real estate which have been oversold will get some respite in the near term? What are you predicting? I think the, the good thing about, and I still maintain that about the India story has been that the growth has been pretty, not sector specific, but it has been broad based. Again, I'm, I would differentiate between what happens in the equity market and what is uh, fundamentals. You could have uh, from time to time uh, sectors which are in vogue or the fancy sectors, but those are technical by nature and they are their life is short lived. But if you want to look at what sectors to go in, and the simplest thing to do is you look at what the composition of GDP is and as the composition of the and if you allocate your money to what the comp barring sectors which are not represented in the uh, GDP and you were to allocate your money to what the GDP because eventually GDP is a factual number so if it comprises in percentage terms of X Y and Z sector if you concentrate on that you will as an investor miss out on spikes or whether it's the dot-com spike or whether it's the real estate spike but uh, you will also not go through the agony of what those kind of sectors went through. So the safest way to do is if you are a long term equity investor is allocate your money as per the G. You can even do it on, it doesn't have to be futuristic and you know make a second call because GDP numbers in terms of percentages don't change so much in terms of sectors. So if, if you are saying your GDP is X and X comprises of these sectors and this is the, value, uh, this is the weightage and the valuation, I think that's the simplest way to do it. Well, Abhay, you also spoke about that risk capital. What's your own assessment of fund flows in emerging markets and specifically into India? Do you expect fund flows to, to, to sort of come back into our markets or is that still a while away? See, as I, as I, as I was trying to say before, risk capital is, uh, you know, a lot to do with psychology. And, and to explain that, uh, to elaborate that further so that I can make my point, is that, for example, let's say, uh, a, a company or a country is growing at 40%. This is what I think the story is right now. Numbers being indicative, numbers not being sacrosanct, but just to give an example. So if you're growing at 40% and next year you're growing at 20%, there is a 100% fall in your profits. And compared to a country which is growing at 10% and next year is going to grow at 0%, there is a 100% fall in the profits there also. So the immediate impact on the mind of both the both the countries or the people in that country or the composition of the country or the corporates in the country is the same because both are suffering from a 100% drop in their profits. But eventually, once that immediate psychological damage is taken care of, what you will sit back and see is that, look, I'm still growing at 20%, but I'm growing. Whereas the person who's at zero, 
will con we, you know can't take any kind of uh, relief from any source but in the short term the damage is to both so to to answer your question i think people after the initial shock is over both domestically and internationally i think people are sit back and going to go back to like you would go back to any any stock after the uh, initial uh, setback and say okay where is the growth i think that is what is going to be what is going to happen internationally in terms of funds flow also because at some time uh, again time is a question mark as i said is to do with mind rather than to do with actuals but sometime you're going to sit back and say look there is this country still growing at xyz number as compared to another country and i think eventually capital should follow that route all right abhi well our next big local event is of course the election now from a market point of view what are the expectations and what is the best and the worst case scenario how is the market looking at this event so clearly the worst case scenario is a left led for the markets i want to say for everyone but for the markets is a left led coalition that obviously will have its own implications as of now that doesn't seem to be a very strong possibility but uh, markets will also uh, uh, you know take in the effect of the elections or the result de depending upon at that point of table at that point at what level they are in so even if you have the worst case scenario and the market is discounted more than uh the what the worst case scenario is you may see a rally in case of a worst case scenario you could have the best case scenario and in anticipation the market has rallied more than uh what the best case scenario and you could actually have a correction so it is very relative to where the market is as to when the event happens that correlation is very necessary abama many thanks for joining us with that perspective